This is Audra. We're ready. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll call a special board meeting for Monday, June 1st for USD 464 to order. Appreciate everyone's patience as we work through this, trying to get together and partial collaborate, but yet still do a Zoom type meeting. Uh, with that, I need a motion to approve the agenda. I make a motion to. Go ahead. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded by Kaya and Justin. Uh, Kaya? Yeah. Yes. Justin? Aye. Drew? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Karen? Aye. And Chris? Aye. All right, motion carried. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Aaron and shut my mic off. And I think we got the chat function and uh, maybe questions at the end. But all right, go ahead, Aaron. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, everyone, for getting together. Um, I think June, you know, pull up the presentation and we'll um, start talking through it. All right, can everybody see the presentation up on the screen? Yes. Great. All right, Jane, go ahead and go to the next slide. All right, so just a little um, presentation overview agenda um, and we apologize for getting this out to the board and not a whole lot of time to pre-review, but um, the whole team's been working really hard to get this together, and um, I think it's a really thorough presentation. So, like Jim said, if you guys have questions as we go through, um, you can use the chat function. Otherwise, we'll try and save them for the end um, once we get through everything. So, um, start out with the overview and expectations. Go to the next slide, June. All right, so um, just similar to the other presentations um, on the project, wanted to start out just kind of talking about uh, where we've been. So the last time we met two weeks ago was the design development presentation, uh, which was presenting the um, further developed plans with um, more detail in the, the casework and the specific uses of the spaces and mechanical um, system details and uh, site work. So um, from there, as we talked about at that meeting, the next step in this overall process is going into construction documents, which um, is where DLR is at right now, and which is really just kind of finalizing the, the final details of everything that's been developed, um, coordinating the civil structural and MEPs um, for the final bid documents, uh, which are currently scheduled to be completed by August 4th. So I just wanted to um, put that in there since we had the opportunity to, to meet tonight um, again. So where we're at, um, as we talked about in the design development presentation, um, we are coming back tonight to uh, present to the board a revised athletics edition design development presentation to address some of the general comments uh, that the board had about that particular part of the design, as well as specifically um, the east end um, and the bleacher section of the, um, of the gymnasium itself. So the goals of the presentation tonight are uh, we're going to go through and kind of clarify some of the overall athletic addition costs um, with the different areas of that addition. I think it was presented as um, a number that contains several different sections so that give you a little um, better look at what costs are going where as part of that part of the project. Um, also provide detailed information um, about the programming 
and uh, the design progression of the gym. So DLR is a great presentation put together and um, we hope that uh, we can explain the process that we that the team went through um, in the design of the gym and that um, it really balanced the needs, the programming needs um, of the district and the budget and with the goal of, of still trying to get a um, unique uh, flexible space. Also, we'll present the options for the design, um, some tweaks to the design of the East End Bleacher section as re requested by the board and also, we'll be showing some diagrams DLRs put together for the multi-purpose room and how that space um, was in, is intended to be used um, and the different functions for that. So as I think most of you know, the specific action requests of the board tonight at the end of the presentation <clears throat> are really kind of three separate items. So one would be to um, approve the gym design, the gym design development, and um, the option for East and Bleacher section should um, the board like any of the new options or um, you know, be pleased with the existing option based on the additional detail developed that DLR will show tonight. Uh, also to approve the overall project design development. So that's what was presented at the last meeting. Um, with all the discussion about the gym, I don't, there was never an, a, an action to officially approve the overall project design development. So um, we just wanted to revisit that. And then to also, um, at this time, I think the, um, the district feels the athletic multi-purpose room is an important part of this project as we'll talk through in the presentation. And it's asking for consideration to go ahead and include that as part of the base project going forward to construction documents. So um, next slide. So wanted to just kind of start out with um, kind of stepping back in the process and talk through the, the overall programming that was and thought that was put into the design of the gym um, and how we got to, um, got to where it's at. So with that, um, the proposed bond scope, as you see here, that was the actual language in the bond program for what, um, what the space was to be. So, you know, it's fairly um, broad new competition gym with needed support spaces, including improved physical education classroom space. From that, uh, when the team started into schematic design, there were some additional uh, requirements and thoughts that came out uh, that, that DLR began to work towards. So those, a few of those were the target number of seats, uh, the desire for a large, flexible, common space uh, for community gathering and athletics. And then also the uh, flexibility in use of the gymnasium for multiple sports practice, um, training and games. So as, as input was taken from um, different faculty and coaches, I think that um, those needs started to develop and um, DLR was tasked with designing around that. So I'll let, I'm gonna turn it over to Mark Farrar to kind of go through what those specific needs of the district um, that this was designed around. All right, good evening, Board of Education. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Okay, good. Um, yeah, one of the things that I, I really felt like I haven't done a very good job with with the Board of Education is explaining, number one, the, the purpose of the gym. And it's really easy to start when you think about a gym and you really focus on game nights. Um, the reality is we spend about, I don't know, I'm not gonna be exactly perfect here, but 25 nights a year. But every single day of the school year, we use it as a classroom. And we use both gyms all day long. Um, those get a lot of use. And so I really want to emphasize the importance of that space as a classroom um, as much or more as a place 
where we have game nights. And although that is very important, we need to provide a good experience for our patrons and our parents and families and students uh, to have a, a great experience on game nights. But we just need to also remember that it is a classroom and it will be used all day long. Um, so the new gym, as you can see on the, the PowerPoint uh, course, we're gonna use it for practices. We've talked about uh, football or basketball and volleyball. Um, I don't know that we've talked a lot about spring sports and fall sports and inclement weather. Uh, there are times when we use our gym and, and it, it's hard to believe that we use it for softball and baseball, but it's not a regular ball that we're using, just so you know, we're not tearing it up. Uh, they use a softer ball. Um, in that gym, we could potentially, the softball team can almost fit the entire field out there. The baseball team can has, have the capability of taking an, the infield, um, which is quite a bit of good usable space. And as you know, during the spring, it seems like some years we have more practices on the inside than we do the outside. Uh, so that's really important for preparing. Um, <clears throat> of course, volleyball, basketball has varsity. We'll use junior varsity probably games in the in the other gym, uh, but the tournaments, you know, we've got a lot of tournaments uh, and wrestling tournaments. You know, the, the format of that gym is really conducive for wrestling and that East end cap would serve as a uh, headquarters for the management of that tournament. Um, expanded space for PE program and expansion and flexibility and scheduling. Uh, there are lots of times when we have multiple classes trying to use that East gym. Uh, one of the things that I've talked to our coaches or coaches have talked to me about is the importance of that upper area in the gym we currently use for warm up activities is very hard on the body uh, running on that concrete. When you run on a, a wood floor, it, uh, it, helps, it helps everything. So that safety and health and safety was important to our coaches on that. Um, the East bleachers, uh, that area also would be used for agility drills. Uh, weights class does their warm up there, like I just mentioned. Uh, we have a, 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 a machine called the dish. The dish is something that kids during practice, when you have breakout drills or small groups, the dish would be used in that East end cap. Um, uh, well, June, you need to go to the next slide. There we go. Uh, volleyball, of course, we'll, we'll find numerous ways to use that. We even have a uh, care of athletes class where we teach training techniques. Um, that area would be used during the day for not just PE, but our care of athletes class. And that's an area that we would like to see grow and offer more classes in that area. Um, and during games, we talked about band seating. We talked about student section and Big Red. Uh, we'll be moving Big Red to the side so that they're closer to the action and they can have a bigger impact on momentum, all that good stuff. But the band will be sitting there. And I think that uh, during other activities like graduation, Veterans Day programs, that's, that area will be filled. Um, it, uh, it will be a great, a great spot especially during those activities when we've got basketball goals put away, whether they're swing up or movable. Um, the the multi-purpose room is, is interesting because the more we talk to coaches and uh, think about what our needs are for storage, the more we know we need this. Um, this isn't something we want. It is absolutely something that, that the school is gonna need for many years. Um, I went and toured numerous gyms in the area um, and took coaches with us. And we looked at all the things, the different setups that they had. And one thing, the common thing that every school said to us was, whatever you do, make sure you have plenty of storage. Um, because they all regret not building for that. So I, I wanted to include that. That was a, a quote that I'll never forget from um, the schools in Topeka and also schools that are surrounding us. So that, 
that area wouldn't just be storage though, depending on the season, it will serve a different purpose. Um, during basketball season, our, our visiting programs would use that during halftime instead of uh, going all the way back to the old locker rooms. We would have to have a place to put scores tables and we're gonna need another scores table. Um, that's gonna need to go in there. Wrestling mats, uh, we've got lots of equipment that we use that Big Red uses for tailgating, um, PE uniforms. Um, and one way to tell is if you go over to the West Campus and you look at all the storage over there, that stuff is gonna be, is gonna need to be moved and brought over to the East. And so all of those items, PE equipment, um, uniforms, and we'll use a combination of our current storage in the East Gym along with this um, but we want to we want to organize that in cages for individual sports, and uh, and be able to have this multi-purpose room as a as an opportunity to put things. Um, gosh, I I just there's so many uses for that for that multi-purpose room. We could be doing uh, baseball and softball batting cages and a golf hitting net in there, um, cleaning equipment. Uh, you just, you name it. I can't imagine the more we went along with this program and, and designing for this uh, facility, the more I realized I, I can't even fathom this construction project without that space. Um, so hopefully that gives you a better idea of, of how we would use it. Um, I think it, uh, I think it's critical. So does anybody have any questions that I might be able to answer? Thanks, Mark, um, for going <clears throat> going through all that. Um, I think next we're going to just roll into the budget. So I'll turn it over to Joel. Um, it's not real detailed budget conversation here, but um, based on some of the comments from the last uh, DD presentation, uh, I thought we'd share a little bit more about how the overall cost of that East End Edition breaks down and just kind of revisit that um, design development costs. So, um, go. You go. There you go. I think you're still on mute, Joel. Is Joel there? See him. There he pops up. Oh, there you go. He's having trouble unmuting. Hold on. connecting to audio, so. You could dial in if it's, you can't get his computer to connect, I don't know. Tammy, is he trying to dial in? Yes, he is. I want to steal Joel's thunder and take his pie chart away from him. Let's go ahead and um, we can go ahead and, oh wait, is he there? You're, you're muted, Joel. 
unmute. How's that? Yeah, I got you. <laughs> uh, must have been on the other end. I don't know. There we go. Yay. So budget, this is, uh, like Aaron said, we're just going to go through this really quick. If we have other questions, once we get through the major presentation, we can revisit this. I have some detail we can pull up if we want to really get into the weeds on it. But I just wanted to remind everybody where we were. Um, at our last presentation, we showed you the top chart with schematic design next to design development, where we stand overall with the construction budget. So we're slightly under where we were at schematic design, um, which is a good thing with the amount of contingencies we've got in the project. What I thought would probably be a little helpful is to show these pie charts. We didn't do that in the presentation last time, but I, I know there were some questions on are we spending too much money on the gym, not enough on the classroom spaces, or how does this really compare? Since some of our numbers were overlapped, especially on the gymnasium side with the choir. So these two pie charts show schematic design and design development. So if you look at this, we're spending roughly 25% on the gymnasium addition, that orange piece of the pie. Um, the site work itself is split a little bit, but it's more heavily weighted towards the classrooms and the parking needs, obviously. So if you think about that, we're close to 70% uh, as being spent on the academics. Uh, that's choir, um, the West Wing administration, the kitchen areas, um, all of that uh, is really the lion's share of where you're spending your dollars. So I thought it was uh, important just to put that into perspective a little bit. Um, as we tend to focus a little bit on the gymnasium. And I know why we did it. We uh, talked about some of the cost progression items that were changing numbers, and a lot of them seem to be associated with the gymnasium. Uh, but uh, as we look forward, and if you wanna click on the next slide, we broke out um, a, a better idea of where we're spending that dollar. So the gymnasium itself there, if you see in the, the pink or salmon color is roughly 6.4 million of this east addition. The locker spaces in blue are roughly 1.7, and the totals are there on the screen too in the box. Uh, the circulation spaces, uh, roughly 2.3, and then the public restrooms, um, 370,000. So I thought it was important to break that up so you can understand where those dollars are being spent. Uh, it gives it a little bit better perspective. So on the next slide, uh, we also broke out the choir and the associated circulation around it. So the choir is roughly 735,000 with the circulation corridor uh, at approximately 140,000 um, for this piece of the addition. So um, hopefully that paints a little bit better picture of how this east end and the budget is shaking out. Before we go on any further, is there any questions on that? Any um, thoughts, lingering concerns? Okay, because the rest of this portion is really gonna be centered around design. Um, so just in brief summary, again, I think we're in a really good spot with the budget uh, on target everything that we're presenting here this evening is still within the budget. So um, if we wanna revisit any of this cost information after we get through the rest of the design, I'd be happy to take a step back and do that. So if there's no other questions, I'll, I'll turn it over. Okay. Erin, I didn't know if you wanted to transition. Oh. No, um, I think Amber, you're going to start with this, right? So yeah, yeah. like uh, you said, um, we'll let DLR kind of dive dive in here. Um, I think they've they've really um, you know put their nose to the ground these last couple of weeks and um, created some really great additional images and diagrams um, to help um, better communicate the design of the gym and some of these. Um, um, multi-purpose room and support spaces. So um, turn it over to Amber. All right, thanks. 
Good evening. So we, like Aaron said, we have a lot of content here to go through um, that we thought would help tell the story a little bit better of how we got to where we are. So um, most of it is addressing the questions that you guys had from the last meeting. Um, with the exception of the first item, we thought that it would be good to do a little bit of a look back and see all the different things that we studied and worked through with the district administration to get to where we are and to what we presented to y'all in schematic design and design development. So that'll be what we go through first. And then we'll go through some diagrams that support what Mark talked about, the different ways that gym was going to be used. We'll go through the East bleachers as far as how we ex expect that to work and be used. Um, I mentioned to a couple of different people that we have a sports, some sports designers, and I'm going to share some of their thoughts and what they came up with looking at the gym. And then um, five and six and seven are addressing some of your other questions that you had throughout um, the last board meeting. So go ahead, June. So like I said, let's step back one second and just talk through some things that got us to ultimately where we ended up showing you the, the plan that was in Scanic Design and you'll see was pretty almost identical to what you end up seeing in, in design development. Um, so again, just a reminder of the things that we were, the targets, the programming pieces that we were trying to achieve with this new gym, all the things that um, Aaron read off to you earlier. So um, a seat count, flexible commons area to really support that new gym. And then supporting what Mark talked about, flexibility and the use of that gym and common space for all that time that there aren't, there aren't spectator sports going on, how else it can be used and make a really good use of that um, part of the bond. So in schematic design, really what we look at is how can we lay this out or where do the puzzle pieces fit the best to make the best use of your money and achieve the things you need to achieve um, spatially. Go ahead, June. So what we started out with was a couple of different case studies and that's just looking at, and Mark mentioned they went around and took some coaches and looked at buildings. We have a couple here that we, we showed them of our own projects to, to just, just as um, examples, it's easier to look at um, so a, another project than a blank sheet of paper. This is one over in Missouri in Jeff City, Capital City High School. It is a larger school, so 1,200 students had a smaller seat count on their gym, and that gives you an idea of the square footage. This is one, I mean, there was some discussion about the track above. This is a top-down gym, so all the spectators come from that northwest corner, come in and go down to their seats, and this required a lot of additional um, um, square footage for uh, circulation. The other thing I'll tell you about, if you haven't been to Jeff City, you know it's a lot of ups and downs, it's, um, not a flat city. So we had the grade that really uh, dictated this design as well. Um, being able to use that really um, helps reduce the cost of an option like this. Go ahead, June. The second one that we Second one that we studied was Kearney High School, also just across the river from you guys. Um, student capacity is higher as well. Their seat count is lower. So you notice that same number of a gym um, square footage starts to kind of be similar when you're looking at that seating capacity, that uh, racetrack, uh, running track up above. So this gives you an idea they had their seating concentrated on the two sides. Go ahead, June. And the third one that we threw in here was Wichita Northwest. You'll see that this has, so what that west side indicates the, if you can point June or I think I can too, that hey, west. Do you, do plan, you have information on what the dollar per square foot value was on those projects? I don't, we didn't prepare that. That's something I have to work on and, and get to you. Okay. Um, that plan west or left-hand side set of bleachers that's shown is an upper level mezzanine. So you can see, yeah, so those are the seats there. And then all that white space around it is all that extra circulation required to make those seats work. Um, so just gives you an idea of um, some things that we looked at. Okay, go ahead, June. So then um, just to go through a little bit more information on, like I said, the steps that got us here. So we started with, okay, well, your existing high school capacity, your existing gym holds about 2,100 2100 students or seats. So pre-bond, we started at that, uh, you guys remember a super high level when we were talking through pre-bond, it was an 18,000 square foot, around 1,800 seat gym. The whole 
you know, Joel just gave you a breakdown for all these different areas. Remember when we were talking it was high levels, athletics, all support spaces, um, some grossing factor in there was around the $10 million mark. And Joel's numbers are the more um, accurate at this point. So then we moved into programming, bond pass, moved into programming, same size, same seat count. We started to look at what would a walk down design look like in like a couple of the examples I just showed you. Well, for one, our site is not, doesn't lend itself to that kind of a design. There would have been a lot of excavation and um, a lot of costs associated with that uh, different type of structural system. Some factors that really pointed us away from that option. So then we said, well, could we do a partially below grade? So now you come in in the middle and you, some of it you go down and some of it you come up. Um, that would have been less excavation, but still required some. Um, and both of these options really require that additional circulation space that accommodates those walk up, walk down patterns. Um, so really those two items um, point to additional dollars that we didn't have in the budget. And so we turned away from those, go to the next page, June. So we stepped a little bit away from those then and moves our, moved ourselves into, okay, what can we do to still achieve what they're wanting? Because at this time we're talking about getting the highest seat count that we can, but also still achieving those multi-purpose um, needs. So then we started to talk about, okay, well, let's stick with the size that we had, the um, increased seat count that we're trying to achieve, but what kind of multi-purpose space can we um, achieve? The next two are ones we're gonna have some graphics that I'm going to um, address next, but I wanna get through kind of this progression first. So line item E with the asterisk there, we talked about the same size, that same increased seat count, but a multi-purpose room that's connected, but still could be um, separated. That gave that ability to have the additional seating, achieve that higher seat count that we wanted, but flexibility for those daily school functions, all the things Mark talked about being able to use. There was a, um, way to partition it off. But all of this focused square footage within that gym and didn't give us the gym lobby size that we really felt was appropriate for the uh, size of the school and the size of uh, functions we were talking about. So then line item F that has also has an asterisk. We looked at that option similar to that Wichita plan I showed you that had the mezzanine level of seats. So we were all, so that was our way to uh, um, increase the seating capacity um, but still look at trying to keep that square footage, you know, how can we keep that square footage down? Well, it adds significant cost in the structural system because now we're talking about an additional um, second level. And it also adds all that circulation space that we showed you around that West um, uh, Wichita plan. So to, you add that including, so all that that I showed you just ground space, but then you have an elevator you have to add and a couple different stairways. So there's just a lot of added cost to that option. Um, and then, but we'll show you it graphically. So those are the two we really dive deep into. Um, G and H are a couple different other. So G was talking about, well, what would it look like if we had a center hung scoreboard, which increased the height of the building, which added significant cost. McCown can speak to that if they need to. And so that's when we kind of all, so not only the cost of the system, but the cost for the structure of it and the cost for the structure of the building all kind of pointed us away from that option. And then H is um, what we currently showed you. So that was kind of the hybrid of all these things we're looking at. We kind of took the pieces and parts out of it, what's working, and ended up with the current design that gives you that ideal seating capacity, included the flexible area of seating that added to that capacity but and, and worked with that multi-purpose room and a common space that really um, is appropriately sized. So then you can see those numbers we showed you last time, uh, high school capacity of 800 and up, and the future gym capacity of around 2,300. So we'll go ahead, June. So just a reminder of the schematic plan that we showed you. I'm sorry, let me go back. So the two asterisk, uh, two starred um, options that I just talked through, I wanted to give you a little graphic about those. So the one where I talked about, we started talking about this multi-purpose room to address the capacity. That's what's shown there at the top of the screen. And at one point we kind of talked about, okay, could it be separated off somehow so it can be used in different ways? And I think that's where we kind of decided, let's try and use that square footage and make that commons. If you highlight that common space, June, so you can see how narrow 
uh, the, yeah, there you go. That lobby common space is pretty narrow and really wasn't what uh, the district envisioned as working for this. And um, and then that multi-purpose space, we really wanted to try and use that square footage to expand that lobby, give more of that wow factor. So go to the next one. Sure. Yes. Are, are we doing questions at the end or can we ask questions as we go, as we go through? Um, at the end would be great if we can remember them. <laughs> okay, I'll write them down. Thank you. And then um, the second one here is showing that what, what happens if we give you that mezzanine level. So the purple areas down below are the locker room spaces and then the mezzanine spaces above that. This still met that capacity seeing we were looking for. Um, really, we started to see all this extra added square footage for the circulation that I talked about. And go to the next view, um, June. There's a upper level that will show you kind of what that seating would look like and then some of that extra um, circulation space and then go to the next one. I think this isometric view really um, shows that pretty well. So you can see that additional seating, but it's at quite a premium to provide that. So that gives you an idea of why those couple of things got, um, why we walked away from a couple of those different options and moved on, I'm going to the next one. Then we moved on to what you saw at schematic design. So again, kind of this hybrid, okay, how can we get that expanded commons the seating count we want, but not added cost, um, and still give that you know uh, um, that wow factor feel. So you'll see these uh, couple of different facts about the space didn't change from schematic design. Go to the next one, June, and into um, design development. So here's a couple of different images that we shared with that, and this is looking to that west end, and then this is looking to the east end. So go ahead, June. to the design development plan then. So really here, you'll start to see all that detail gets added. So SD, we're kind of schematic design, we're putting the pieces in the right places and then design development, we're adding all that detail. So still kept with that same seat count, kept the bleachers on the east, started to account for some things like the exiting that we need to do and um, support spaces, things like that. So then, um, so that's that was our look back. And I didn't mean to that for, to take quite so long, so apologize. But I wanted to, you to see all the different things that we did to get to where we got to. So these diagrams, then I'm going to have some of the team help out with these. I've um, got, I think, our whole entire architecture team listening in tonight. Go ahead, June, to the next one. So what we wanted to do was give you guys an idea of. So Mark gave you this plethora of different ways that this thing's going to be used uh, during the day. These diagrams kind of support those different views, but in, hopefully in a more clear way to see. Um, so this first view gives you an idea of if it's a volleyball game, main, you know, varsity volleyball game, varsity basketball game. Go to the next one. So here she points out that there's some ADA seating all around at the very, um, at the bottom of the bleachers. Those are recoverable. So if you don't need all of those, you can pull them out and they can be regular seats. But they are, um, then they push in real easy to be um, seats to whatever count you need for that evening. Go ahead. Okay. Go to the next one, June. There we go. So you can see what the setup looks like with just a main basketball game or that main volleyball game. This will give you an idea of this is created with the district's input of where seating might occur. And Mark, I don't know if anybody or you are. Lauren want to weigh in on this as well and get an idea of where they kind of envision all the people sitting. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Amber. Um, you can see they're there very clearly, but uh, we, we started with the visitors student section. Um, the less we can ask them to walk across the court, the better. So we put them right there by the door. Um, student section kind of want to get them more engaged and in a place geographically where they can have an impact in a positive way on the game. Um, the band is all that I would say, you know, we might have a spot because middle school students don't typically like to sit with high school students and there's just a little divide there. So the other portion of the east 
end cap could serve as that, or it could be this last section on the north side to the right of the red for uh, students that are not high school students. But um, this looks like a good layout. Uh, this is how I, I would uh, envision for our new gym. Thanks, Mark. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next view, June. Tammy created all of these um, renderings here to give you a better feel for what it's like to be in the gym. So feel free to weigh in whenever you'd like to, um, Tammy, on all these. This is still showing what that would be. So these are renderings intended to support that plan view that you saw, so you can get a good idea of um, what it would feel like. So can I add something here, Robin? A um, couple things I, or sorry, Amber. Sorry. Uh, a couple of things that we, we kind of talked through as, oh, sorry, um, if you could stay on the rendering there for a second. Um, but um, these renderings that they're gonna, that DLR is gonna walk through are actually showing um, as, showing the, the gym as presented at the design development with the slight change that they did adjust the baseline for the court um, slightly to the east. But in terms of the bleacher section at the end, um, that it's the configuration that was previously shown. So I just wanted to um, point that out before they get into some of the options. And then I know there were some comments about colors and just wanna make um, everybody feel comfortable that colors and renderings can sometimes um, not show up true and can definitely be tweaked. So um, you know, we don't, that's something that um, we can, we can take up later if, if any of that's an issue. Okay. Tammy, you have anything to add on this one? You're muted. I'm gonna keep happening. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> this is, sorry. This is just showing, um, I was just showing a main volleyball court set up the next one will be a um, practice or maybe a volleyball tournament or volleyball practice. Next slide. Right. With the um, curtain down in the gym showing the two swing down volleyball nets. Next. So you maybe point out Tammy, one side that the bleachers in. Oh yeah, sorry. The, this would be the um, would be the south side bleachers are pushed all the way in for to make this volleyball tournament or practice work. Um, you're seeing it. Yeah, this is just a different view. You can sit in kind of in the center, couple areas, and see both both games um, or both practices. Coach could watch. So. Okay, next June. No, I forgot to say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the next view shows um, just basketball practice or um, a, pretty much the, all the bleachers are in at this point. And on this, you can kind of see to the east end, you'll see um, the agility um, markers with agility dots and agility ladders down um, that are underneath the bleachers. So hopefully you can kind of see on this, there's a ton of space there. So even if you had kiddos at all five of those basketball spots, you're still got a ton of room in there to be um, doing that jelly training or other things. Um, in this view, you see all the bleachers are turned in. The five um, basketball goals are, or the four, excuse me, four basketball goals are swung down. And on the east end here, um, we're using one of the um, mobile um, basketball goals as that um, fifth practice area. And I think next we're going to show a um, bird's eye view because you can kind of see how large this um, this gym and all the stuff that you can do in, do in it. Okay. The other thing, June, do you have the video or do you want me to show that one?
If you're talking, I can't hear you. So we also did oh, a little. Sorry, I was muted. Okay. I need to stop share. Okay. So we also have a, um, a fly through video that we did, super short, um, but just sometimes it's easier to understand the space um, when you can kind of move around in a little bit. Can everybody see my screen? Okay. Let's go through this real quick. And we start out in the lobby just so you can get an idea of if you were coming to an event, maybe coming from the existing gym. Obviously, so furniture, graphics, some of those are the, especially furniture that can, you know, has time to be decided on. Some of these other pieces um, we talked about in the last meeting, really the focus for tonight was just to, uh, I wanted you to see this, especially you could understand as you walk through here and go into the gym. And this, we've got this as a view with all the bleachers out. So again, if you had a main basketball game going on in the main court, you can get an idea of what the bleachers feel like pulled out and then that east side as well. Might be a little hard to see those um, fabric ducks are actually tucked up into the joists. So they'll be set as high as they can. And Tammy can elaborate if you want or two on some of the finishes and the way she uh, picks, picks out those types of things. That looks at the east end section. You can kind of see the gray markings on the court are the practice. So it gives you an idea of where those are, how those are spaced out. The white is the main volleyball court. Scorer's table here on the, on the left-hand side. I think that's about it. Okay, I'll let you share again, June. Hopefully that gives you guys a good um, feeling for what that gym is like, or what it would be like to be inside the gym. So with that, um, now you kind of have a better understanding of how that gym is gonna be used, the whole entire gym. So we wanted to turn our focus to just that East Bleacher section. Go ahead, June. Okay, so, and Tammy can speak up on these as well. So she made a couple of views from the East, um, just to give you an idea of what it's like to be in the East bleacher section. This is sitting at the top of the bleachers, very top against the wall, looking out. And the next one, Jim, gives you an idea. And this is, if you're sitting at the railing on the east end of the bleachers and you're in the band section, this is what you would see. Okay. So then is Craig, if you wanna, I don't know if you would like to speak up and kind of go through. So we worked on quite a few different options of how we could modify these bleachers on the east side, make a few small adjustments. Yes, I am here. Um, so we, this current layout, we're calling it option zero is, is basically what we've presented in design development with the just over 2,300 seats. Um, and just pointing out again that the court is centered on the, on the center section of bleachers in this, in this plan. So let's go to the next. So one of the first, first things we explored was just extending that east option. Um, we have run all of these by the bleacher consultant and gotten their buy-in on, on these options. And so everything we're presenting to you does work. Some of them have um, some pros and cons. This, this one actually um, we're able to elevate, add some rows to the front, which basically elevates the back row, another couple of rows. Um, so it will go up higher, but we're able to keep our aisle widths the same as they are now. Um, this allows us to add another 56 seats. It brings that the feeling of being closer to the court, you know, as much as we can, um, and still leaving enough room around the, the movable goals uh, for circulation. Um, so the cost on to add those seats is around seven thousand um, dollars. 
to pick up the 56 extra seats. So we were just looking at some of the, the things that were discussed um, the last presentation and how we might accommodate those. This adds a few seats, but takes a few away and it allows us to get exit out uh, directly to the east. Um, we're not saying all these are desirable. We're just showing you what the opp opportunities are. Um, so we actually, between um, the ends and, and the seats that we added, we net a loss of 20 seats and that um, would allow us to get a deduct of $2,500. So the bad, the, the con here is the decreased seating. Um, it allows it does allow us to bring the east section closer to to the court. Craig, do you do you have um, <clears throat> the especially on option or, or current option zero and option one um, the distance from the court? Do we have those measurements? Um, I don't have exactly. It's it's going to be um, I think with the with the two rows it's twelve feet. It's basically the same distance from the base of the bleachers to the to the goal line as it is from the wall to the goal line. And that leaves us six feet behind the portable goal for circulation. So I don't think we would want to go any less than that. Um, we do have the doors on each side, but there's always the circulation that needs to go back and forth. Um, the other thing, and Mark may, may talk to this, is in front of that um, the end line that we do have the bleachers, it does provide us the opportunity, you know, to to um, to have you know the yell leaders and and some of those functions be ready to go onto the floor during timeouts. Otherwise, they'd have to be in the bleachers or on the sideline um, in the first row of seats. This gives them the opportunity to be ready to go out and to be a part of the game for for more part more parts of the game. Um, yeah, so this was a twenty five hundred deduct, lose twenty seats. It's about 10 feet from baseline to that first row. Great. Uh, the next option three then um, still allows this um, exit out to the, to the east. Um, it does maintain the exit down to the south to the locker rooms. Um, so all in all between adding the seats to the front and providing the exit out to the east, we lose a net of 40 seats and a deduct that's results in a deduct of about $4,000. Again, it brings the east section closer, but we do lose some seats um, and we still have all the flexibility um, maintained for that east end and all the program elements for that. Okay, next. So option four then is still looking at that um, kind of northeast corner of the east end. Um, in this case, we would provide an exit out underneath um, of, of the bleachers. In doing that, we need to provide a, a permanent structure uh, to allow that to, to occur. Uh, and all we lose 13 seats here um, and we do lose the flexibility once we start providing structures um, in this at the east end, then we start to lose the flexibility of the of the programs that are that are desired to be there. The other thing that uh, yeah, this still allows us to be centered on the court. Okay. So option five then, option five, and this is something that was discussed last time. Providing exits out to the east then through the, the walls that are north and south of the east bleacher section. Um, so it does allow us, it has 64 seats overall. So you see all that orange area on the east end. And we did have to carve out um, some seating uh, on the north and south sides. So one of the cons is you're trading more premium seats um, on the long runs for the seats on the end zone um, that would add another $7,400 to the cost. Um, some of the things that the bleacher um, consultant pointed out are that 
in carving out this nook, um, just because of the structure of the long sections of movable bleachers, um, it creates some maintenance issues there. It also requires um, that movable railings get placed on those stairs in front of those doors. Um, probably the, the least desirable result of this, we had to respace the aisles to maximize, to keep seating maximized, but still allow access to those end bleacher seats that are behind the exit ways. This puts the, the stair aisle directly at mid court and does not allow you to have a seating section centered at mid court. It would also offset the lettering that's in the bleachers uh, so you wouldn't have the same effect with that. Um, but it does, it does still allow you to maintain the programming than at the east end of the gymnasium. Okay. All right, thanks, Craig. Yep. So um, go to the next one, Jim. We mentioned we had our um, sports guys take a look at this. Um, they felt pretty good about everything we put together, which was um, reassuring. They had a couple ideas and you'll kind of see the, the theme, I think, here as we get through these. Um, some lighting effects, which we were already doing, dimming on the seats and really helping that court become the real focus of the event. Um, the next step up from that, so that's already included, we're already doing that with, this, with the lights that we already have, um, included in the DD package. The next step up would be LED lighting that's like basically show lights. So the kind of thing, if you've gone to a collegiate game where they're highlighting the players as they come out or using it for commencement ceremonies, just a Show lights. He made the comment that's something that no other high school has. So you'd be you'd be the one around here. Um, having a sound system that really functions well is designed into everything for all the different things you need it for. We've got that included in the design. Um, I hate. I probably shouldn't have used the word premium there. I kind of um, regret using that because it's not that we're going over and above. We're making sure that the system is designed appropriately for all the things you need, and we have. Um, designers who focus on AV systems and acoustics, and they help us make sure that system's going to um, function really well. You know how important it is to be able to hear during large events. Um, and then um, he talked about premium seatings, hospitality areas, different ways we can um, treat people special, whether it's your Big Red or your Booster Club. We've already done that with the team media room. I know there's plans that that can be used kind of as a hospitality area. And then I know Mark's talked about the Big Red getting to be able to have those great seats really close to the middle and really have an effect on the outcome of the game. And then the last thing he mentioned was bringing the memorabilia, anything that's sitting in the old gym that's really um, reminiscent of great times in that gym, we could look to incorporate those things, whether it's in the new gym or the new gym lobby. I know we're already doing some of that. Love to have ideas if there's more that anybody um, wants us to take into consideration. Okay, so um, number five, we're almost through it here. So the couple of questions about the support spaces and some things that go with the gym. So we'll talk about restrooms and circulation. First up, I think is restrooms. Go ahead, June. So we've got in red highlighting. So this is a far out look where all the public restrooms would be if you're the, if you're a patron at a basketball game. So again, our new gym is on the east right hand side of your plan here with new restrooms right directly outside of it those two big red blocks we'll i'll zoom in on those in a second and then as you go to the west into the existing building you'll see a couple different other sets of restrooms that also would be accessible um, but are existing already there existing to remain so go ahead june and zoom in on those other um, oh, I'm sorry, the restroom, she's got those highlighted as well. That's the yellow. So you can kind of see the yellow or dotted all the way throughout as well. This Drinking plan. You said restroom. Drinking fountains, sorry. <laughs> Drinking fountains with bottle fillers. So then um, right here, you'll see the pink shade shows the blow up of these restrooms. So that north side is men's, obviously. Quite a few good fixtures in there. And then the south side is the women's. I think my last count was 17. So um, 
quite a few within there. And then there's also the great thing about this layout too, is there's a lot of stacking space within there. So whether you're waiting on someone else, waiting on a child, or it's everybody goes, you know, there's a little bit of space to be um, waiting within there. And then to the west of those or to the left hand on the plan are a couple of uh, family restrooms as well. So the great thing about this, the doors are right there where we can have good signage that points you to it. Um, but accessing them is really easy. So they're close by, but um, accessing will be super easy as well. Okay, June. I think our next one. So then this shows you. So there's a question about um, uh, getting between, circulating between the two gyms. So you'll see all the red lines give you all great options. So the obvious one up to the north is if you're along that existing gym lobby that you guys already have, you go through a set of doors, be into the new gym lobby and um, be able to access everything there. There's of course then the, highlight the second one down then June. That second one down is the um, way that I bet a lot of you get between the two gyms right now. The bottom one, then the bottom L-shaped arrow is another way you'd go into our new building. You'd be in the new corridor and come out near the concessions. And then right in the middle is another access that the district really could decide, you know, day to day how they want to use that. So it could be a really convenient pass through and there may be times they want to control access there as well. So they'd have a set of doors that they could lock off and do what they want. So that would be a real quick way to get from court to court. So there may be applications where that's super useful and maybe times when they want to be able to control that. Okay, so moving right along, well, I think the last thing we've got then is diagrams to support the things that Mark's mentioned at the beginning with regard to the multi-purpose room. Tammy, you want to go through these or you want me to? You can start. So the left-hand side is obviously what's in DD that we showed you before, no, no multi-purpose room. East-hand side adds the multi-purpose room in brown. And then the gray shows you an exit um, to get out to the exterior as well. So this first layout just gives you an idea of, okay, what if it was a meeting room at halftime for the opposing team? So tons of space for that, even with some storage in there. Uh, maybe you'd have a rack of chairs sitting there as well, tons of room for all of that. And by the way, range of order of magnitude pricing on this is about $200,000 from Yol. Okay, go to the next one. Um, I think even cleaning equipment, could eat, cleaning equipment could be sitting in there and not bother the use in that way. Then on the left-hand side, you'll see, okay, what if we had a batting cage in there? Mark mentioned a lot of times having to be inside. You can see we can get a nice big basketball cage in there and the two basketball goals, sorry, batting cage and the two basketball goals to the left of that and the scorer's table. So you could essentially clear all the equipment off of the gym floor and still have space to uh, for your batting cage to drop down. So in this case, a lot of these that we do um, just retracts up and it's out of the way for most of the time when you need it, you pull it down. Then on the right hand side, again, different configuration for storing some of those big pieces of equipment from the gym floor, but you could also use this for yoga, aerobics, basically an added classroom. Um, it could be used for warm up for dance and cheer before an event or even warm up for your volleyball or practice uh, or basketball teams as well. The last one we have is what if you had some golf practice areas in there for golf swings. Again, that fits as well very nicely along with all the other um, equipment from the gym floor. So hopefully these give you a good idea. It's a great sized room that gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, Keeping it open gives you all that flexibility to really arrange that equipment in there, um, seasonal even. So Mark could decide what way it works for different seasons, knowing he's going to have need for different other, um, other activities within that space. Oh yeah, so I'm sorry. So we had one other thing then we can hit on. Um, there was kind of a, some question about what the building looks like from the west hand side, or if you were maybe sitting at a, at a football game. So we added a couple of renderings. If you remember this original one is if you were maybe just parking to come into a basketball game in that brand new parking lot. Go ahead. 
Oops. Don't be sad, she's real fast. <laughs> so then, uh, there you go. <laughs> so gives you a great idea, great signage, just a reminder of that big signage um, that you get on there as you're driving up, know where we're at, know where the opposing team knows where they're at. So then if we back up a little bit, the next view, June's gonna show you a site plan that gives you an idea of where we're standing. So that red is if you're maybe sitting at the stoplight getting ready to turn in. Yep, so go ahead to the next one. <laughs> there we go. So you can see with a little bit more of the greenery, the landscaping gives you an idea of how the new building is fitting in with the existing. I like this view because it really gives you a good idea. You can see that existing auditorium. Everybody has an idea of what that is in, in your mind because you've been by there. You see how it kind of nestles in between these two new pieces. Hopefully you see it's a nice big continuous look. Yeah, so she was pointing out that the new admin there in the middle and then to the left or to the east is the entry to the gym. Okay, and the next one then is as if we were maybe just getting ready to leave a football game or drive up, maybe you're driving up that back drive. Go ahead, there we go. So I know there's been a lot of discussions with this side. Hopefully you kind of see with all the um, landscaping, it really um, helps with the scale of the building. These renderings do not show that multi-purpose room. So um, if you were to see that, you, it wouldn't actually affect this too much. That line there she's showing you, that wall would basically pop out towards us in a line with that brick she was pointing out right there. So as with regard to adding that multi-purpose room, you know, we could modify this image to show that if you'd like to see that, it wouldn't do, um, wouldn't change it too much. This image also shows you on that south wall, she, you can see some metal panel and some windows. So we've kind of worked to break up that view, um, that facade as well, it gives some a little bit of texture and also some light into those support spaces. The dark color is the metal panel kind of in the background. And then this lighter color you're seeing up front is the brick. Okay, now I think that's all we had. And I know I went, ran over some questions, so. Um, well, just in closing, I, I think I want to just come back to, um, you know, the, the action requests and kind of summarize wrap up DLRs, um, great presentation. And um, the, so number one, again, was approving the gym design development and East bleacher options. So DLR showed several options for reconfiguring those East, ble East bleachers. And I think as Craig said, the team doesn't necessarily feel that all of them are, um, you know, the best options in the world, but um, just wanted to show that uh, looked at several different ways and different exiting paths. So um, I think the district and um, the administration and the project team really, um, really feel that the, the current layout works really well. And, you know, if anything, that option one adding a few rows um, to that center section and the sides, um, bring that just a little bit closer, um, but does obviously have a, um, a dollar value, um, well, moderate cost to it. Um, so that was action item number one on the East Bleacher section. And then, you know, just overall in the design development, I know we didn't go back through the entire design development presentation today, but, um, you know, it's as it stood at the last meeting and just um, wanted to make sure we had that official approval. And then last would be um, approving the addition of that multi-purpose room to the project. Um, as Joel pointed out, budget-wise, um, I think the project's in a great place to add that to it. Uh, it had about a $200,000 estimated cost impact. Um, we have decided um, to take the, um, digital scoreboard, the video scoreboard that was um, included in the DD package, um, that that will be set aside as a cost option, um, which would you know, offset some of adding the multi-purpose room if that, um, if that is approved by the board, um, as well as some other you know, adjustments and um, the, where we're sitting at with contingency deal, it's, um, it's appropriate 
to be considered at this time. So with that, um, questions and comments. Aaron, I, <clears throat> and DL, everyone, Amber, Joel, I don't know, I'll leave somebody out here, Craig, and everybody, thank you for all that updated and detailed presentation. And I kind of, I like the proposal of how you um, suggestion to break this out into three action items so that we can kind of tackle this. I mean, it sounds like maybe the first thing we do is maybe move into a few of these questions to clarify. Um, why don't we, Drew and I both asked about the bathrooms. Maybe we could just touch base on that and then um, we'll turn it over to some I'll survey everybody for some other questions, give everybody a chance to talk. Okay, I can answer the why and then Joel can pipe in on the um, cost implication. I think there's a question if there's a budget impact on the um, restroom layouts that we were showing. Um, so originally when we, we had the, basically we had two sets of women's and two sets of men's. And really that was just trying to get the spaces right and get some fixtures in there. But ultimately we knew that wasn't the best um, layout. And for wayfinding, it probably wasn't the best. And so what we really, all we did on our side was kind of flip-flopped. We made that bigger space into the women's and made the upper space be um, majorly, or just men's, focusing on that being men's. So yes, there was an increase in fixtures and really it came down to how can we make the best use of the space so that when you have this event full, you don't have issues with um, the lines or people wondering where all their money went and why they have to stand in line to go to the bathroom. So um, Joel, as far as the budget impact, I'll let you weigh in on that. Yeah, so the restrooms to the north, which are now the men's bank of restrooms, um, those were not a part of the SD estimate. They are now included in the DD estimate. So the, the budget numbers I went through early on in the presentation do include those restrooms. Um, so they fit within the budget, but uh, from SD to DD, that, that area added about 130,000 to pick up those extra fixture counts. So that's where we are with that. All right. Well, I know Drew's typing some questions, but I mean, I was going to maybe check in, uh, see if any of the ladies had any questions. I don't know, Kaya, Stephanie, Karen, well, uh, you want to ask these guys anything? Anyone? I'll ask one really simple question. All right. So the water fountains, I see one over behind the concession stand and one by the women's bathroom, but are there any within the gym? So, yes, we would have some within the gym. Absolutely. Okay. So once we gonna get this layout, the blue where the bleachers are going to be all nailed down, we'll get those in the right spots so they're additive and don't and, and not detractive. <laughs> so thanks. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, Karen, anything? No, I'm good. No, Jim, I'm good. All right. Uh, Drew, you want to fire away? To do. <laughs> yeah. Um, my first question is uh, regarding the space of the of the gym. Is I saw a dollar per square foot amount and what Joel was covering. Is that pretty much what we're, we're it, it either to add or deduct space? Uh, is that about the amount? If, cause I would assume that the, that the building was, was the East end was added be, rather than just extending the entire building, just because of that extra square footage and that cost, would that cost be about what the 300 and, I don't know, $340 per square foot, or is that not, not actually what that gym cost or higher or lower? I didn't know how no, the numbers were blended. Um, so I, I'm not entirely sure I understand the question, but um, the cost so, per square so, foot 
on the east end, if, if that's what you're talking about, if we were to cut that off and not do the east end, that's a less cost per square foot to add or deduct that than it is for the main gym. The okay, reason so is you have all your mechanical units um, that you have to buy, your services and all that that go into a gym, no matter how many seats you have in it. Does that answer your question or? So, so it's, so there's a, there's a fixed base cost and then that is independent of the square footage. That's right. Okay. So as we add or, cause I, it sounded to me like from, from what Farrar was saying, this Farrar was saying was that the, that the space is really important. So the cost to add the space, I mean, so if you, if you expanded the, the gym, then the cost per square foot is not really $347 a square foot. It's something less than that. Is that correct? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I understand now. Your multi-purpose space, is that what you're referring to? No, no. The actual gym gym space, because I'm trying to um, just understand, because I'm trying to understand what the impact is for our target of, of 2,300 and maybe, or, you know, we were originally targeting 2,500 seats and I see 20. 300 was the minimum and if there's a cost associated with that given that the um all the case studies were larger schools and um had smaller gyms than this so i i don't know what was the what was the reasoning behind the the target of 2500 or 2300 um when the when it sounded to me like the gym size Square the square footage of the floor was really the is really what's important. Um, so I don't know who could answer that because I'm trying to understand. You know, if we're that much larger than even a 1,500 person school, then what's the reasoning behind that, and what is the cost of that capacity? Hey, uh, Drew, just real quick, great. Great point there. Um, and I've been a part of larger schools in like Wichita Northwest and South and I, um, a lot of their big activities that they do in those schools, they farm out to different locations like Intrust Bank Arena, um, Hartman Arena. Uh, their graduations, they do not have, or their events where they bring in lots of people, they do not have um, those at their home facility. Um, in fact, their their attendance for sports are less than ours, just because they have less of a community. Um, so the size in a 4A is, uh, the value of a size of a gym is different than, than an inner city school. So is there a reason we didn't, we didn't do case studies of other comparative 4A schools as part of this? Yeah, I think if you were to look at our league schools like um, Spring Hill, Lewisburg, they have larger, larger than what we're proposing here. Um, Cause they have the mezzanines that uh, I just didn't feel like. And I think the team didn't feel like it gave a personal touch to the game experience. Once you get up to the mezzanine, you're so far removed from the action that, that you don't sometimes even feel like you can have an impact. So mm -hmm. uh, I think, yeah, that's a good question. I think that in my experience in traveling to our league schools, uh, it's the same size or bigger, unless you're looking at like Eudora right now. I don't know what their capacity is. Don't you have some issue here where this allows you all your teams to practice? Cause we really only have two gyms. We don't have three or five gyms or whatever to. Yes. Across our, to be yes. getting everybody. The, the answer you're right, Jim, the answer would be related to the programming for the space um, and, and uh, what we plan to use it for. And one of our goals for, our community was to eliminate 5:30 a.m. practices, and this will allow allow that with the space that's in there. So, what's what's the magic number with regards to half courts to be able to avoid the 5:30 a.m. Is that five, like we're showing here? Um, I think primarily what what I think makes it work is that the screen that comes down at half court, the curtain, uh -huh. and that gives you the two courts plus the uh, the east end cap gives you some optional space as well 
but what you typically do is you practice your JV with your varsity and then the freshmen need their own space. So I'm not an expert on those gyms, but it looked like the painting uh, and the and those other half courts and those um, on the on the sides, when you have the bleachers pushed back, there's a lot of open space behind there. What's what prevents those spaces to be and the goals to be moved out to the exterior walls, which look like they could almost be a half court on the sides too. It, it, I, as I was looking at that, I was questioning whether or not you could fit six or more in there. Drew, are you talking about the space here? Right, yeah. I think he means uh, those the are the clearance. Um, so we're not, we're not showing right. There's actually um, the museum in here. Yeah, so we have group chase. What, sorry, go ahead. No, I think he's talking about if you go to the plan with all the bleachers pushed back with the, the uh, three point arcs. Yep. Oh, okay, this one, sorry. I think he's talking about how much space is between like the, <clears throat> the baseline and the, where the bleachers. Oh, the baseline, the, yeah, this yeah. space here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you guys ever have basketball tournaments? Yes. Would would be the only reason we would keep them the same distance as the main as a basketball court. Why we wouldn't push them out um, further? So that's basically the uh, that, that's a two full courts side by side. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so it's not just for practice activities. It's also for you're running two games. Now, if you're doing a tournament, how do the bleachers come out and how do people access them from the, do, what's that look like? Uh, Drew, if you wouldn't run a basketball tournament side courts. Right. You would not? No. Okay, so so having those be two full courts is, is not That's enough? for practice only. Okay. Okay, so that it would not be set up to run a tournament in there. Not basketball. <clears throat> it okay. is for volleyball. Do you have similar, have you worked up similar drawings for the other sports of what that looks like with the seating and everything? I mean, the different scenarios. This is great yeah. information. It gives us a lot of, I mean, I really like this and appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that you all have worked on on showing us this so that we understand what what to expect when you know as far as the different configurations and things is there something you're thinking of that we didn't cover well is it just volleyball and basketball is that is that the only thing i mean we didn't show like a Oh, I guess I'll let Mark speak to that. We didn't show like a commencement, you know, or something where it's, um, you know, not not sporting event. Right. But, um, are you Drew? Are you concerned that there's too much space or not enough space? I guess I'm. I my my thing is like, do we we only get one shot at this, and and so it's more of it's not a question of whether do we have too much or too little. Is is have we looked at all of the different conditions and scenarios? Because once it's done. It's done. So that's where I'm getting at. Like, have we have we looked at those options and what is it going to be? Do, were, were there considerations made for that and how did that drive the design? Was it confirmed that it would work? Um, I mean, at this point in time, the, all we can do is assume that it was looked at, but I mean, given the amount of, of focus this is going to have, I'd like to have confirmation that it was, that it was, you know, that that was, it was drawn up, sketched up, and people looked at it and, and confirmed, yes, it, it works. Yeah. The thing that I always think about is graduation, because that's our max capacity event that we have every year. Um, and it, this would work so much better than our current setup, um, primarily because if you look at our overflow that goes into the TPAC for graduation, there's typically about 100 people in there at the most. And 
Um, that may or may not be because everybody just chooses to be standing room only in the east. But if we were to follow the way we're supposed to do it, there'd be about 100, maybe 150 in there. This will allow for that extra capacity. Um, the stage would be there on the west side. Uh, everybody would have a good view. Um, and that is drastically different from our current setup, as you know. Um, you've been to graduations before. So, yeah. when we used to have graduations, <laughs> hey, we're planning on having one still. A uh, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, you have further questions? I'll, I have, I have other questions, but I'll, I'll let others uh, mix it up. Chris and Justin, uh, have anything we need? I, I would just echo Jim's comment. You know, I, I think the, the giving a little more context into the thought process that went into this, I think was really helpful. Um, Mark specifically talking through the programming and, you know, I, I think your comment about this is a, you know, this is a classroom, whatever, 200 and some days a year. And it's a, it's a competition gym 20 some days a year, I think was, was pretty impactful for me. And, and, you know, common sense, but um, hearing you say it, I think really resonated. Um, you know, I, I think as, as you look at the, um, you know, with that context, I'm, I'm less concerned about the East End. I, I probably like the, that first option a little more than option zero, but I, I'm less concerned about the East End than I was. I guess my only question would be um, on the, uh, the multi-purpose room, you know, we mentioned that was directionally a $200,000 line item. Um, you know, looking at, at the initial budget, it, it looked like there were, that room didn't exist in the budget, but I know Aaron, you felt like that it, it did. So I, I just maybe a little context just in terms of where that $200,000 fits in. Yeah, um, I, I can start and Joel, you can um, support me and um, anything I leave out, but um, I think like we mentioned, so the DD budget, um, June, if you'd go back to that summary slide from Joel. Um, but at, at DD, they, the construction cost was, um, was down slightly below the initial bond budget. So the difference in that um, funding flipped over to the soft costs line item. Um, and if you recall from DD, we didn't put it into this presentation, but there was um, a, a very generous amount of contingency um, being held on the district side of the, um, the budget ledger. So um, I, some of that would come from contingency if, if needed, um, but we also mentioned that um, the, the video scoreboard is gonna be kind of tabled right now to a cost option that would drop this number by a hundred thousand, um, which is, you know, half of that 200. Um, there's also still some, um, you know, design and escalation contingency in this construction cost, you know, if you happen to get favorable, um, you know, bid results, um, there's that option too. But, um, so I think, you know, either through the final adjustments and construction costs or, you know, through a small use of the owner, um, soft cost contingency and um, that multi-purpose room um, fits in. Yeah, I'm confident that we've got the money to get that multi-purpose room in. If, you know, we're from SD estimate, the construction dollars are about 63, 64,000 under and the 100,000 moving over from the video scoreboard, we're almost there right there. With the amount of escalation and contingency, we're that's in the project to help manage this. I'm confident we can get it into the construction dollars, let alone the amount of owner contingency that could help fund it. So uh, I am not concerned about being able to afford that. That space is roughly $145 a square foot. The East bleachers, just as a reference, Drew, is about $180 a square foot, uh, $184 a square foot. So. Um, it, it depends on the space on what you're paying for. I thought I just mentioned that. No, I appreciate you looking that up, Joel. Um, I think that's all I had, Jim. All right. Let's see if 
Chris, you have anything? Or... Chris is Chris is sorry. So we're confident that we got the dollars. What happens when we put the buckets in the ground and potentially have unsuitable soil to stabilize for our education wing? similar to this situation with the bracing the wall on the east side of the current gym. Are we still confident we have the dollars to make this work? Um, yes, I, I do. The soils report that we've got back, the, uh, the structural foundations and recommendations from the engineer uh, are reflected in the estimate. Um, right now, we don't anticipate um, deep foundations and piers. If we do run into something, uh, we do have some contingency um, remaining. And before we go into the construction project, we'll talk about that if we need to uh, manage any of that, if we feel like there's a concern there. And um, I know Aaron is planning to hold some money in the owner's contingency to make sure we do get out of the ground. So uh, right now I do believe we've, we've got plenty of funds there. And then we talk about the additional space of the storage room mats and drop down batting cages. That doesn't seem real functional to me. If we're gonna drop nets down, we're gonna have to move wrestling mats, portable goals. Am I missing something here? No, uh, Chris, I've thought about that too. And I think it's one of those deals where every season that comes, you reshuffle. And that's what we currently do. Uh, we just have to reshuffle in a different area now. But that is certainly something that I have thought about. Very good. Drew, take over or finish up if you can if yeah. Chris is done. yeah i got a couple more things one was uh the what is the uh potential cost of those of those uh floor mounted goals because i know that that's i i i my understanding is they're more costly than the than the other goals is that is that correct yeah and i'm, I'm glad you brought that up because at our last presentation I think I misrepresented how expensive those uh, goals are. So um, the flip down, two flip down basketball goals would cost right around 16,000. The portable goals would be an additional 40,000 beyond that. Uh, so roughly 50, 55,000 okay. uh, for the portable goals. And as Tammy mentioned early on, I think the flexibility that the East End creates in being able to shift that goal back to add one more practice facility back there, one more court, um, you know, really helps with that from a cost standpoint. I think it's a pretty small impact, yeah. but that's up to so you guys. Does does the space that the floor is required for the floor is that? It, is that requiring um, a greater distance of, you know, what's, what, how much floor space does that require? Is it something like six feet? It was in that drawing, wasn't it? It was showing the, the three point and the, there was space back there to pull out against the bleachers. Yes, it, it was shown in the, um, the pra back, basketball practice um, floor plan. Right. The end, line, the end line shown is six feet deep and it goes a couple of feet beyond that. And then you've got the support and we've got another six feet be seat behind that. Um, it was really, the length of that is really driven by the seat count that was desired and the limitation of 14 rows that we can get uh, efficiently on the north and south side. So it just happened that we had the right amount of room to incorporate those into the design without having to stretch the building. Okay, so, so but if we didn't have those, that would be a potential because how wide is that gym? It's, let's see, 100 
close to 120, 130 feet, a little over maybe. 130 feet. Yeah. So if you go 130 times two times six, 1500 square feet times, let's say it's 180, that's almost, you're approaching $300,000 for that square footage. Now, uh, how much is it? I don't, how know much how, is it I don't know how many seats that equates to as well. But I mean, right. if we're looking at options related to $7,000 here and add, or, you know, you add 60 seats or, you know, and that's $7,000, I think even if we don't make a change, we just need to know what that is costing. Like you have an additional 12 feet of width there on this on the space, which wouldn't impact the half to half courts or the east end, but that's almost three hundred thousand dollars. Like, are and 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 are we okay with that? Are you saying that if you didn't have floor mounted goals and you shrunk the gym? Yeah, because at that point in time, because you're because what's driving because you can't shrink it down any more from it is it, what what it is now because you're either hitting the constraint for a target of um, seating or you're hitting the your your flow then space around the outside of the goals right so we're assuming right now that the that the original target of 2500 we're okay with not making that we're at 2300 and um, we can add 60 some seats over on the east end for seven thousand dollars but i don't know if you if you remove six feet off of both both ends and drop almost three hundred thousand dollars that pays for other things and i'm not saying it's right or wrong i'm just saying that's that's the balance of how the the money works so are and and you know for the board are we okay with that because that's really what there's an opportunity cost there so you would lose 224 seats by chopping off 12 feet. Okay. Drew, the only comment I would make is I just stood in the middle school gym last week and the middle school gym bleachers cannot fully be pulled out when they have a volleyball game because mm -hmm. at the time that they built that it had to, the gym had to be shrunk. So I just think in the future, it's better to have more square footage to work with than it is, you know, 30, you don't all know in your own house, if you are making renovations, it's better to have more space to work with than less. Yeah, except this, this square footage is looks like it's more space for corridors and walking like hallways versus room square footage because it wouldn't impact the usable square footage that's outlined. That's why I was asking about the uh, the half court scenarios and why could you move things back and create some more space. So there's wasted space on the exterior around that isn't being utilized because you're you're trying to maintain full court, you know, two full courts side by side. So if you cut and squeeze it down the other direction, you still have the same usable space as what people described, but you just reduce, you know quarter million dollars or, or more out of the cost, plus another, you know, if you assume $125 per, per seat, that's another $30,000. So you're definitely over $300,000. And we have the money in the budget at this point in time to do that. Just is it worth it for, um, for that seating? And for, you know, we're spending $40,000 on the um, extra for the, the goals and then another three hundred thousand dollars for the space and it and it appears like and, and correct me if i'm wrong it doesn't impact the functionality of either volleyball or the basketball during games or the um uh or the practices with the with the two half courts and the east end i, I might be missing something but that's just what it appears like to me and and then the the, the question is is because we've there's been a lot of decisions made about, you know, we can't do this because of budget constraints. So I mean, if 
and maybe it's worth three hundred thousand dollars to us. Yeah, Drew. I think, um, and again, like you said, I mean, I, I think it's the the board what your guys' opinion is, but just to uh, like we went through in the presentation. Um, all of these programming factors went in to developing the layout as it is. So while it may appear there's um, you know, some extra space on the north and south end when the bleachers are pushed back, that's how it works once you get the, the count of the seats in there that was in the program, which was the 23 to 2,500. So right, and which, is why I, I guess, can't, which is why you can't squeeze it north to south, but you, have, you might have that flexibility east to west. I think you're right. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I just think, you know, you go, if you squeeze it east to west and get rid of the floor mounted goals, I mean, it, I'm not the architect here, but I'm just thinking through, it's just um, because of the way the um, support spaces and the hallway that feeds those lays out, um, you know, I'm not sure how it would, would impact that. But um, again, the, the size of the gym, like Craig said, was was really first developed around the number of seats um, and the, the reinforce that the floor mounted goals came came later and, yeah. and happened to to fit within that space pretty well. No, I know that that was helpful because it really looks like if you're looking at a gym with with the, the riser limits, you know, as far as height of the bleachers, if you're looking at a basic gym about the max you can get is is 2000 seats. And then if you want anything more than 2000, you got to do something on the east on the end, like what we're, we're showing, or you got to go to a mezzanine. Is it about is that about basically how the math works out? That's about right. Yep. And because everybody else has run into the exact same thing. With this design, we get more programming space because it's on the ground level and not vertical. Yep. No, that's, I think we're trying I agree. To, I, I, the I square footage is, is a higher priority, it appears like, than the actual number of seats. Drew, I just thought of another. I don't know for whatever it's worth, but when you've set up a wrestling tournament and you have multiple teams, all of those teams do, throughout the day, they find like meeting spots where they, volleyball tournaments are the same, where they like gather in areas. And I just know because I came from a wrestling town that in wrestling meets, when the mats are set out, a lot of the teams will set up when those bleachers are pushed back in those corners and along the back walls. And yeah they do take up a lot of space. So did we, I think that that's another way that that space can be used. No, that's a great point. Did, so did we look at how the, 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 all the mats lay out in the space? That's a, that's an excellent question. So that we see how much space we have for, for those activities. Well, it's larger well, than our existing gym. The court, yeah. the court is uh, 50 foot wide by 94 foot long. And your wrestling mats are 42 by 42. So tons of space around there. I mean, it would appear to me that, you know, we're trying, I think probably the number one objective laid out at the beginning was most efficient, maximum square footage for an efficient use of space as possible. I mean, it's never, it's hard to be perfect and check all the boxes, but they've done a pretty good job of addressing, our, I mean, our needs. Is there any other questions or are we prepared to kind of move on? Um, I had one last one and it wasn't related to the gym, but just something that I saw in the in, in here was when we first a year ago, which is kind of crazy to think about April of 2019, I think we were talking about the, the student capacities during the planning and we were talking 800, which is still carrying through here. However, we also talked about it at um, if you went to a student centered um, scheduling, you can get up to 990. Is that still available to us because that's what we talked about during the bond process was you could you had that flexibility to go to to that student centered and go to 990 um and the reason why we were wanting that flexibility was is because um there is some scenarios where growth if you are stuck at 800 then then there's a potential that the elementary school and the high school reach capacity at the same time or within a couple years of each other which is a which is a 
obviously has some constraints, put some constraints on the district. Is the 990 still an option? Because I haven't seen that number recently. Um, so I just wanted to know from the design team if that's something that's still that's still out there because that's kind of that could that could be a um, a constraint that the district would need to be aware of. Yes. Uh, you should be okay. You're, you're we're saying it's designed for 800, but if you since we went to um, a lot of classrooms being assigned to individual teachers. We actually have, and then there's some, the two big learning labs that are unassigned. We're closer to at 80%, which would be, um, you know, normal occupancy. You're, you're about, I think you're just over a thousand students. And if you go to a hundred percent use of the building, you're, you're closer to 1200. So you've okay. got, you've got plenty of capacity in the, okay. in the building as designed and programmed. Good. So the good news is you can grow into this building however you want to operate it. You know, as Mark and his team understand how those uh, new spaces that are new to them, how they're going to use them, they'll grow into them and and uh, they'll be they won't be forced into owning one of those new classrooms. They don't quite know how they're going to teach their lessons in it. So yeah, yeah, that I just I just want want to make sure that that was still that was still available to us yep. down the road. Hopefully long after I'm off the board. <laughs> um, is, is there further questions? No, I think I'm ready. I'd make a motion right now to accept the um, action item for the um, multi-purpose room. If, if, well, if I think we probably, I think the desire would be to work through these. Oh, okay. Is there an order? order? Did you figure out, I mean, I mean, personally, I like either gym option one or two. I could live with either one of them. I think they're it's a little more cost, but better than zero. But I think I think uh, Aaron and the team would kind of like us to work through those as presented on the agenda. So, I mean, the first one would be the the gym. If there's any, I'd entertain a motion on that if you'd like to. Um, I would move that we accept um, option number one for the gym. Is there a second? I second, I second that. It's been moved and seconded. I'm, I know, I don't know if that's Stephanie. I know her, Justin, too. Um, all right. With that, I would do a roll call vote. Uh, Drew? Aye. Justin? Aye. Chris? Aye. Kaya? Aye. Karen? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Jim, I will vote for that as well. All right, one task is accomplished. I think that would be the uh, motion, entertain a motion to approve the overall design development plan encompassing option one with the with the gym. Is there a motion out there? I would move that we approve the overall design development plan as previously presented with the uh, option one that we just voted on. I second. All right, Justin moves, Stephanie second it. We'll go through the uh, Stephanie. Aye. Karen. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Justin. Aye. Drew. Aye. Chris. Aye. And I'll vote aye. So unanimously carried. On to the multi purpose room. Um, this is being suggested as an addition given uh, the budget and the need for additional space. Is there a motion to add the uh, multi-purpose room onto the uh, design? I make a motion to add the multi-purpose room. All right, is there a second? Second. Kaya moved, Justin seconded. All right, we'll start with Chris. Aye. Drew. Aye. Justin. Aye. Kaya. Aye. Aaron. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. And I'll vote in favor as well. So motion carried. Thank you, everyone from McCown Gordon, DLR, Aaron. I know it's been a, an administrative team, Lauren, Mark been a rough couple weeks. Uh, I think you know, we've got a pretty impressive looking school here. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions or thoughts. If not, 
I move we uh, adjourn the meeting. Please give me your feedback on how tonight went. Sorry, I couldn't make it over there to the uh, in-face part of the board. Thank you to the to the board. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thank you.